John 19 and 28 reads, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. John, the theologian, understood his assignment. Jesus and John knew how important the impact of Jesus' last sayings would be to Christians throughout the world. That Jesus deliberately and carefully orchestrated his last sayings on the cross and John pinned it to paper. Two simple words, I thirst. In its literal definition, it has no power. But in its spiritual implication, it is life-saving. If we look at the surface of this saying, I thirst, we see a man hanging on a cross. His body is stretched wide. He's nailed. His hands are nailed. His feet is nailed. He has a thorny crown placed on his head, and he was pierced in his side. Blood and water was draining from his body. It was so hot outside. Sweat was pouring. We, in our natural minds, those of us who lack spiritual insight would say, of course, he's suffering from dehydration, physical exhaustion, and that's why he uttered the words, I thirst. Yeah. But it was far greater than that. Jesus thirsts for more than just a drink of water. Yeah. First, he said, I thirst, was a declaration of solidarity. He wanted us to know that he felt and understood humanity and suffering. He wanted us to know that we share the connection and that he cares for us. He wanted us to know that he knew what it's like to have an unmet need, but still desire to be obedient to God. First Corinthians 12 and 13 teaches us, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether we have been all made to drink into one spirit. Yeah. In other words, we are all united through the spirit of God. Amen. Secondly, our thirst was a declaration of surrender. After knowing that his mission was finished and to fulfill scripture, he said, I thirst. Not his will be done, but the will of his father. Jesus died being obedient to God. In the midst of him dying, he didn't lose focus. He remembers that there's an Old Testament prophecy that had to be fulfilled. Yeah. These prophecies can be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 15, and Psalm 69, verse 21. He knowingly said, I thirst, knowing that in the midst of his suffering, his enemies would give him a bitter drink. We get so caught up in our sufferings that we forget who we are and we forget who we serve. How many of you know that you can taste the bitterness of today, but if you surrender your life completely to God, the sweetness of salvation is coming next. It is our deliberate surrender that we find our deepest fulfillment. Third, our thirst was a declaration of substitution. Here, Jesus is willfully laying down his life only to take it back up again on the authority of his Father God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. He granted sinful people access to the living water. My soul cries out, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. His fourth declaration, I thirst, was a declaration of his love for us. Anyone who does not, um, does not love does not know God because God is love. But God shows his love for us in that while we are still yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the ultimate price for our sins because he was thirsty for the sovereign God. And because he thirsts for you and for you and for you and for me. God, he said, come. He said, come to me without delay, because when you give me your sins, you give me the joy of being your savior. There is nothing I cannot forgive and heal. So come now and unburden your soul. No matter how far you have strayed without a destination, no matter how often you have forgotten about me, no matter how many crosses you have bared in your life, 
I want you to always remember one thing that will never change. Yes. I thirst for you, yes. just as you are. <laughs> Lastly, when we look at this uh, text, it says, as I, as I come to the end of this text, I want to leave you with two scriptures. The first scripture is John 7, 38. He believeth on me, as the scriptures have said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And John 4 and 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. Yes. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Yes. God is chanting that favorite tune. What you looking for? I got what you looking for. What you looking for? I got what you looking for. Are you thirsty enough to seek him? Trust him? Believe in him? He's knocking at your heart's door today. Will you open up and let him in? Oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you.